Hey everybody, this is Gary from Sailing Vessel Maracuja Beneteau 423. Uh, we got quite a few questions about our water maker and a water maker on a sailboat is not a necessity. It's, it's a luxury, but it's made our life very, very nice. Uh, ours, ours, actual ours is a portable unit. It's called a Rain Man and they say it's portable and it is if you're uh, very very strong <laughs> each there's two units there's a uh, pressure unit and there's a membrane unit each of them weighs probably in excess of 60 pounds so you can imagine lugging these things out every two days or three days out of the boat drag them on the deck hook them up and then put them back in I determined that wasn't going to be uh, a long-term fun solution so we actually hard mounted both units uh, the membrane units in the aft cabin and the pressure unit is in the port side lazarette yeah I'll, I'll, I'd also like to say that uh, after three years of use of our rain man water maker I think it's excellent and I'd like to say that we are not spokespersons for Rain Man or for Honda generators, but both are very reliable units. We've had really minimal issues with both units. They just run and run and run. Uh, just like to say that if you buy something, make sure you can get parts and services and technical support. And uh, I gotta say Honda and Rain Man, excellent. They, they, they've come through and got if you order anything from them, they ship it immediately. I mean, the same day. So, very, very good companies. Uh, Rain Man, they actually, after they send you an order, they also ask you for feedback. Like, how did we do? You know, what, how can we improve? So, you can tell they actually care about their customers, which is excellent. Well, let's go through the system components and uh, show you how it's set up and make it run. Yeah, number uh, number one is uh, opening the seacock, which is where you're going to get your salt water supply. So we're going to make sure that's open. Then I also usually take a quick look at the uh, oh, hang on. the uh, we have a sea strainer, and this is for uh, seaweed and all little bits and animals that would clog up your other filters, which are pretty expensive. That's good. That's mounted under the uh, cabinet here. All right, let's make some water. So we've got to open the lazarette. And down in here, we have the Rain Man. All right, over here, this is hard mounted on a shelf with a uh, strap around it and we've been in 10 foot seas and this and uh, we've also got a bracket on this side and wood blocking over here so we've it's never moved so we're pretty happy with that over on this side are the 5 micron pre-filter and a 20 micron filter before that to take the real big stuff out there's also a sea strainer to take seaweed out under the uh, sink in the kitchen. Well, this is the uh, pressure unit, 110 volt, 115 volt. Over here, this is a five micron pre-filter. Uh, this is what it comes with, and it's mounted here. Uh, talking to other cruisers, they said it's a, it, it's a great idea because these clog up really fast and are expensive, the five micron. So this is a 20 micron filter before the pre-filter which I added a bracket here to keep it all in one spot so you don't have like hoses and all over the place uh, over here are the valves that are mounted connecting the pressure unit the bottom valve this this determines where your source water is going to be we're going to turn it up that's for the, coming from the ocean and if you turn it down, it comes out of a uh, pickling jar over here. The, port, the importance of the, this, this bucket here is you fill it up with water you make, which is very clear. And when you're done making water, 
you take this water and you rinse out everything with fresh water. We don't leave uh, salt water in the system because there's too many um, things growing in it. Over here, this is valve number one we talked about. So right now it's in a position to take it out of the sea. Valve number two, this is a test port. So your water coming from your water maker comes to this valve. We'll turn it to test and then it will come into the bucket. So you can test the water for uh, TDS, that's total dissolved solids, which we're running about 220, which is really good. And the third valve, this valve is for picking your tank. Right now it's going to the aft tank. We have two tanks, the front one's 100 gallons, so if we wanted to fill that one, we'd turn it to this position, but Today we're just gonna go to the aft tank. So we'll take the cord out. Power cord. And normally I don't get in here to do this. This is just to show the system. I do everything from up here because I got long arms. Chantel, I don't know if she could reach all those valves. She tried to jump in there. Yeah, I gotta go inside. Plug it in. you have water flow you can burn out your pump I, ha I have done it uh, now we got to go below and uh, adjust the membranes so we're making water right now we're not making water we have to get this up to about 800 psi to start making water so we're gonna go do that now well here this is the uh, aft cabin where we have the, the twin membrane unit set up and when you open this door you can hear water flow and make sure you have water flow or you could burn up your uh, unit and uh, one of the things when you're uh, turning the pressure up is to go very slowly don't just jam the pressure into the membrane it's not good for membranes the other thing that's really bad for membranes is chlorine. Never put chlorine into a membrane. Okay, you slowly dial up the pressure on the uh, membranes. And this one runs at approximately 800 PSI to make uh, 30 gallons per hour. Okay, uh, once you are making water at 800 PSI, is going to a test port. The test port is running into this bucket. Uh, the importance of, the, of this water is, this is like RO water, and when you're done making water, you run like three gallons, I run three gallons of water through the, the membranes, will not, will pass the membranes to flush the system of the salt water and the pressure unit. So you don't want salt water sitting in your uh, unit. Yeah, it's got a lot of uh, biological stuff that grows. So once this bucket is uh, pretty well full, uh, we will turn the valve and put the water into the tank after we test it with the TDS meter. Yeah, our, our unit we actually got on Craigslist, uh, 2017 unit that was uh, used in the Bahamas one season, and then they sold the boat and decided to sell the unit separately. And uh, while a water maker is not a necessity on a boat, it makes your life a whole lot easier to uh, just make water on your boat rather than having to lug 40 or 50 pound water jugs. And you need a lot of water jugs, so I've helped some other cruisers carry their water jugs. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, and it's, uh, if you don't have a water maker, it's, sometimes it's uh, difficult even to find a clean potable water source and some of the some of the towns it's the water might not be that clean so you have to bring your dinghy over to some town dock or some questionable water source and 
fill all these uh, cans up, load them on the dinghy, drive back to the boat, haul them up on top of the boat, and then pour them into your water tanks, which is an effort. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I know it's a luxury having a, a water maker, but to us it was well worth the money to buy one. So that's all I can say. You know, we we're enjoying it. <laughs> Yeah, for uh, our boat, we talked to uh, some cruisers we met in uh, West Palm Beach. They're on uh, MJ Sailing, and uh, they cruise around the world. So I asked uh, Matt, I said, if you, could, if you could have a wind vane or a water maker, which one would you prefer? And he said, do you have a woman on board? You need to get the water maker. <laughs> so I took his advice, and... Everyone's happy. <laughs> if you have any questions uh, about our installation or uh, recommendations, uh, yeah, leave a comment below. We'll be happy to uh, answer.